Hello everyone, I have Project Orca 78 here with me and he definitely is the top of the food chain. What I thought and what the team thought was going to be an eight week build, well, I couldn't have been further from the truth. We'll step you through it and you'll work out why. So why we'd like to show everyone this video is because um, you know, we've done Trevi builds before, but this one's got all the mod cons, all the latest gear that you can put on a Trevi and some more, and it's got some ATA development products on it as well. And I've got Darren here with me tonight to join me to help me through, because he's the man behind the scenes on the major build, and um, some of his thinking and a lot of his ingenuity has been included in this job as well. So we've got the roof conversions, portals, we have the automatic transmission. Yeah, we've got the big ticket items in there. Yeah. The big ones ticked off the list, and then there's a lot more intricate stuff that's gone in this one as well, which we'll step you through. So I have a three sort of short videos. We'll give you a breakdown of what the build is, what it includes, what it's all about, how we got to the point with the inclusions. We'll go around the overall build, what's on the vehicle. We'll go around the interior side of things, what's included, how we come up with that. And then um, we'll also got a key feature here, the whole 12, 240 Garmin Empire bus electrical system, which is like pretty new to us in the full drive scene. We thought it'd be a great inclusion for this outfit. So in general overview of the beginning and how the whole project starts and did start, we have a sit down with our customer and um, he sort of has a fair idea of what he wants in the first place. Like he's a Land Cruiser owner, he's already got one. They wanted to do the troop carrier because they wanted to get in a single vehicle for travel uh, and didn't want to tow a trailer. So that was the key feature behind the Audi cab roof conversion. Our customer also wanted to be able to travel off-road, wanted to be able to get to destinations that were in a vehicle that he could access without any trouble. Uh, On-road, off-road, boat ramps, beaches, that sort of thing. So hence the portal and mechanical side of things, Darren. And then also too, um, we, won't, we won't reveal his age, but uh, you cert get to a certain age, you don't like changing gears, and the automatic transmission was a key point for him as well. Basically, as you sit down and work it out, the list can grow and um, that's how it all can begin. So mate, just talk us through your system and how you go about laying out this pretty long job, very involved, intricate piece of work, mate. Like, what's the steps you take to make sure you get it right? Yeah, so like you said, talking with the customer and getting what he wants from the build is very important. And then from there, it's basically working out, yeah, obviously your start point, but you've got to sit down and you actually got to sit down and write it all out, everything that's going in it, draw out what you need to draw, and actually work out where the actual start point will be, where the end point is, and how you get there. Like, you don't want to be doing things twice, so if you do doing a ball bar, are we doing spotties, are we doing light bars, you know, working all that sort of stuff out. So when you're, you're involved in all that sort of thing, everything's as a step-by-step -step process and you're ticking off the ball points as you go along. And with the interior too, mate, that was like quite involved as well. Like where are we putting light switches? Where are we putting lights? Where are we putting power outlets? That's right, and, and the big thing, with interior fit outs and that sort of thing that people who have done these builds will know is fuses, relays and switches, there can be limits. So we had to look at systems where there wasn't limits and we could add more for what this customer needed. And as you'll see later on in our videos, that the system we went with is pretty pretty cool yeah. and pretty in depth and it eliminates a lot of those hassle areas. And yeah, and part of that planning was also off-grid living. That's you know, right, yeah. Not needing a power point to recharge anywhere. That's it, but now to go out for a few days and not stressing about running out of battery power or anything like that. Yeah, same with water as well. It's water. got good water storage. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we've got the, the build requirements from our customer. We've got our list, we've got our parts list. So the next step, the whole team comes together. We organise it, we book it in, we schedule the labour. We get the parts ordered. We get talk to our suppliers. We try and get key dates in order, make everything flow and make everything happen when it should happen. So we're not having to pull anything back off the vehicle because we forgot something, so yeah, a fair bit of actual planning planning happening too. Yeah, that's right, a fair bit of many hours go into the actual pre-planning of an actual build. Uh, along the way, mate, nothing ever goes for any of you guys out there that are doing it yourselfers or got your own shots, nothing's ever like smooth sailing. Or, Fatty, you come across a few areas that where you, we saw something that we had planned, but then found a better way. That's right, yeah, we had those challenges and, and you don't give up, obviously, you just think of a better way and a different way of doing things, and that's what we've done here. And, and the better way is about making it easier for the customer, solving some pain points, and That's making it right, e yeah. like too easy to use. That's right, it's simplicity is a really good word when it comes to this, like as, as detailed and intricate as it is, the simplicity for the customer is the key. Yeah, jump in and turn the key and go and have some fun. 
Yeah, so being a trophy owner myself and driving one around, I'm quite jealous of this. And um, we're really pleased that our customers entrusted us with this um, job and we're so proud of it. And we've incorporated some OTA products in here. So o OTA stands for Overland Tours Australia and it's a sister company of Mick Tai 4x4 and Outdoor. We actually all work out of the one premises and we have an, a design team and an R&D team and we're working away at some projects in the 4x4 industry and we've actually um, incorporated some into this build. Mate, we've got the, um, the rear compressor mounts to yep. make really good use yeah, of that. Yeah, so we've got a left and right that yep. goes into the rear cabins and recess in behind, so yep. space saving as well, using an actual void in a car that you yep. use for nothing else. Because mate, on a Trevi, you think there's space, there's actually not once you get in there. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you can use it up pretty quickly, yep. you're not smart. Yep, and storage is key, especially yeah. if it's if it's your house and travelling around in. Yep. Yeah. We've got our uh, OTA flares to suit the portals. We've been manufacturing like rock light mounts, things like that. Uh, we've got our rear tables. These are prototypes on this one, but they're they're uh, working really well. We just want to get them 100% right, and um, we're really pleased with that design. Once again, making up best use of the space. Next week, we'll explore the space management within this build providing you with an overview of the interior fit out, a deep dive into the layout, the hidden features, and the space saving tricks and more. And if you were interested in any four wheel drive tourer builds, troop carrier builds, or any of our products, check out our new My Tourer build feature on our website at www.mictie4x4.com.au and make your dream four wheel drive come to life.